Jakarta's poor air quality recently earned it the title of the most polluted city in the world. And for the past few days, air quality continues to be rated as unhealthy. Indonesian President Yoko Widodo has also developed a cough, purportedly because of the pollution. Jakarta has now asked half of its 50,000 civil servants to work from home, so emissions from travelling in vehicles can be reduced. The jury is still out on whether the plan will cut pollution, but those suffering from it certainly wish it does. People on the streets of Jakarta are wearing masks again. But they're not trying to keep out COVID. They are worried about pollution. The air quality has reached such alarming levels that the city has been ranked the most polluted in the world. And that's causing major health problems. Sati has had breathing problems for a long time, but in the past few weeks, her shortness of breath has become much worse. Doctors told her Jakarta's bad air was to blame. I'm really scared that I'll die if there's no one around to help. Lately, I've been having these really bad episodes of breathlessness. It's really painful. Often, I have to handle it by myself because I can't make it to the hospital. The 57-year-old is one of many people suffering from respiratory infections in the Indonesian capital. Over half of a million new cases have been registered in Jakarta this year alone. There is indeed an increase in cases of lung disease, both in the number of visits and the severity of symptoms. Patients with asthma and chronic lung disease who usually have regular checkups and no symptoms have been complaining of coughing and shortness of breath in the past few weeks. That's strongly suspected to be related to air pollution. Even the president, Joko Widodo, seems to be suffering. He's had a cough for weeks and has now called for urgent measures to curb the city's pollution. Civil servants have been ordered to work from home to reduce traffic, and people are being urged to cycle or use public transport. But critics say it's not just the traffic making the air so bad. They blame the 16 coal fire power plants around the city. Whatever the source of pollution, it's hard to get a breath of fresh air here. The right to clean air is a political issue. Two years ago, an Indonesian court sided with citizens in a lawsuit against the government about Jakarta's air quality. Among the plaintiffs is Indonesian Forum for the Environment, an NGO that has long campaigned against air pollution in the capital. From 2030 to 2050, Jakarta will experience a significant spike in energy demand. Unfortunately, so far, there are no viable alternatives to meet Jakarta's energy needs. So coal-fired power plants will continue to play a major role in meeting household and industrial energy needs. Moving the capital to the island of Borneo, the president says, is one of the solutions. But they may not be enough for the people left behind. Critics say that unless radical steps are taken, people here will still suffer the effects of Jakarta's chronic pollution. Joining me now from Jakarta for more context is Bondan Andriano. He's a climate and energy campaigner with Greenpeace Indonesia. Uh, Mr. Andriano, two years back, a court said that the government had failed in its duty to provide clean air to people. What has the government done since then to improve air quality? Yeah, the government always denying the data about the air pollution. Until now, they are still questioning some private uh, sector are publish, publishing the air quality data. They should not do that because the, we can learn from other countries who are successful tackling air pollution is come from the data. Because until now, we are still debating about how or where is the sources of air pollution. Because until now, the data is very inconsistent. Let's say how much is industry, how much is transportation, how much is a power plant. And sadly, the government only focused on transportation, but there is no real action about industries and coal plant because we know there is transboundary air pollution that also coming from outside Jakarta, contribute to the air pollution in Jakarta. The government basically wants to reduce vehicular emissions by asking some, say, 50% of civil servants to work from home. But uh, since you work in the field, can you tell us if vehicular emissions are the main reason for air pollution in Jakarta? 
if you are talking about science, uh, statistic data, yes, transportation is the the biggest emitter. But how about the others? Because Jakarta also mentions in the official data that is also coming from industries and also transport and pollution that coming from outside. It means they need to tackling down all the sources of pollution and open the data to the public. How much is industries inside Jakarta and how much this industries outside Jakarta, let's say also including coal power plant, which is in some data in Jakarta mentions PM 2.5 is coming from the burning of coal. It means there is transboundary of PM 2.5 coming from coal. There is no uh, sufficient or real action from them about uh, tackling down apart from transportation. Until now, they are maybe uh, working from home, but it's a little right. bit, yeah, reducing uh, the air. So, so why isn't the government being transparent about all the sources of air pollution in Jakarta? Because they don't have the data. Because until now, they're still gathering many scientists to make another research. This is why we sue the government in 2019. And the government in 2023, uh, this is President and Ministry of Environment and Forestry, they are doing another cassation. It means they're still denying what the judges say. So basically, what the President and Ministry did now is very contradictive with the cassation that they take in the uh, citizen lawsuit that just this have already the verdict to command the president and the ministry on and all the dependent to tackling down the air pollution. You, from what you are saying, it, it sounds like the government is dragging its feet in the matter, particularly because it is countering uh, the court as well uh, uh, when it comes to this judgment on air pollution. Isn't it in the best interest of the government to actually solve the air pollution problem instead of countering it? Exactly. That's also what we are uh, want yeah, from the government. Stop denying. Stop arguing about the data. Just give us the data, the data and give us the reaction to do it and make a coordination with no contraproductive uh, regulation. Because until now, yes, maybe Jakarta are doing working from home and limited uh, uh, transportation from outside Jakarta by having even and odd uh, regulation. But national uh, government are giving relaxation to the tax for new cars and, and others. So this is very counterproductive. To, so it means we need real act from government, uh, from president, until the provincial level and work together. And then gather also the urgency of air pollution because until now, right. the Minister of Health mentioned like 600,000 of Jakarta are suffering for uh, respiratory illness. This is a very right. uh, strong argument government should do. We'll leave it there for the time being. But thank you so much for speaking to us today. Bondan Andrianu from Greenpeace Indonesia. Thank you, sir. Thank you.